Uh, good evening, members and fellow pres presenters. Uh, again, my name is Michael Cliggett. I am a graduate research assistant at the University of Alaska in Anchorage, and it is my privilege to be with you all here tonight um, to present to you an abbreviated version of my ongoing master's research project, which has been to investigate a white spruce biochar uh, for point of use drinking water treatment. And it is especially uh, nice to be around so many people that actually know what biochar is, because I find myself explaining it far too often to those who don't. And to begin, I'd like to briefly acknowledge uh, project participants, uh, funders. Um, this is a EPA-funded project from the Star Grant, one of their highest um, valued grants, and of course the research team. And as a small disclaimer at the bottom of the slide, although uh, funded and paid for by the EPA, they do not take any responsibility for what I'm about to tell you. So moving forward, um, for probably the very few people in this room that do not know what biochar is. Uh, this is verbatim um, the definition Google would give back to you, as well as some of the popular terms. Um, but more specifically, we know what biochar is. And is this a, uh, right here? OK, perfect. Um, we know uh, biochar is a carbon-rich product uh, from a biomass when it's thermochemically uh, converted in low oxygen uh, chambers or content. And in our research and uh, a lot of the previous research I just heard, um, we investigate pyrolysis. But in our project, we are also investigating gasification. And I will um, speak more on that as we move forward. Um, and so from the thermochemical conversion of this material, um, it generates certain properties of interests, uh, particularly uh, what water quality engineers like myself are interested in. Um, but biochar uh, is remarkably comparable to activated carbon, um, uh, despite rather the smaller surface area. But other than that, um, they are very comparable uh, materials to one another. And that has generated a lot of questioning in the scientific community um, and has generated a lot of sorption studies, which uh, we know is a form of contaminant removal from solution to a solid surface. Um, here is some of the current uh, body of knowledge circulating in the scientific community uh, within um, environmental quality engineering. They have uh, focused on natural organics, synthetic organics, and metals, all um, contaminants that biochar from different sources have been uh, confirmed to remove from solution. And all of these um, studies are relatively new, uh, less than five years old, and more are coming out as we speak. Uh, the interesting part about these studies is highlighted in the bottom of the slide is that all of these were conducted in a static or batch mode, so a non-flow condition. Um, and that raised some questions for our research team to possibly explore um, a more kinetic condition uh, using fixed bed filtration applications. And so that's basically moving water through a biochar sorbent and determining whether or not the biochar effectively sorbs the contaminants and removes them from solution. And it's been very interesting to hear some of the previous talks, um, predominantly agriculturally based. Um, and it's exciting for us to be here now to potentially be the bridge between uh, agriculture and forestry to actual drinking water treatment. And like I said, this is funded by the, e the EPA and has received uh, considerable support from the USDA, I imagine. Uh, moving forward, just a small splash of what we do in water quality engineering. Um, this is a conventional treatment train. And w the places that we are potentially going to replace our activated carbon with our biochar are, are here, here, but more specifically here, at the point of use, in the home, in the residence. And we uh, highlighted this area of the distribution system to basically because uh, our biochar setup is proportional, we believe, um, to uh, basically put it in a filter at the home. And this is some of the point of view systems that I'm talking about. Um, 
all filtration based. Uh, some of the popular commercial brands are the Brita, the GE, and the Pure, all products that some of us may have here in our homes. And uh, in this image here, that is filled with activated carbon. Um, none to this moment have biochar unless we can prove otherwise. And so from the point of use, uh, we believe that um, we can, in fact, improve uh, in-home water quality with re relatively inexpensive materials. And to test that, um, we perform tests known as small-scale column tests. And these are um, miniaturized versions of the point-of-view systems that you just saw. And they require much less material, much less volume of water, much less wastes, um, and are performed at the bench scale. This is a system that we designed and are currently operating. And like I mentioned, it's a kinetic condition. It's not static, so water's flowing. Um, it's more of a real life simulation, uh, single pass downflow, and uh, our flows are automated. And the very exciting part about this is that from this small scale column test, we can mathematically scale using proportionalities um, to what uh, would be needed to succeed in getting the same results at the point of view scale. And so just a splash of our experimental matrix and how we uh, determine if we're successful or not. Um, we targeted two types of solutions. On the left hand side we did a solution with multiple contaminants containing a semi-metal, inorganic, and uh, organic matter. And we were trying to investigate if there was competitive sorption between all three of those contaminants. Um, on the other side here, we had a separate solution containing um, sodium hypochlorite. Uh, and we targeted specifically the chlorine in that solution. And we determined uh, if we were successful or not purely uh, by any detectable decrease of these contaminants in our effluent concentration. And uh, on the more applied side, we wanted to see if these decreases uh, were efficient in the eyes of the EPA regulations. Did they go down to um, lower than the levels of the maximum contaminants uh, permissible in drinking water? So some of the methods of production, our material selection was a locally available biomass, uh, white spruce tree species very abundant in Alaska, also a renewable resource. Um, we prepared our material by pelletizing, um, and we also uh, decreased our water content to, to less than 10%. And our conversion technology, like I mentioned previously, we um, investigated both pyrolysis and gasification. And our pyrolysis was uh, significantly lower in temperature, uh, 450 and 550 degrees Celsius. And our gasification system um, exceeded 1,000 degrees Celsius, which definitely gave us some interesting um, properties within the biochar and uh, effective sorption removals. And so here's just a, a picture of our pyrolysis unit um, in Alaska. Uh, again, the very small temperature grade. So it's going to generate, um, as we anticipated, a dirtier biochar product. Uh, compared to our gasified material, which uh, was much higher in temperature. And uh, f from these two uh, technologies, we put them side by side in sorption studies. And we have here a uh, breakthrough curve um, demonstrating uh, the length and time represented by bed volumes that our media could effectively remove our uh, dosed organics. And on the bottom here, we have our uh, experimental standard, which is our GAC. And we compared that to our gasified carbon. And then up here, we had our pyrolyzed dirty carbon. So from this, uh, these images, you, it suggests that um, although not as comparable in duration, um, it's certainly effective and definitely worthwhile in considering um, exploring it more. And so this uh, graph represents organic removal. This graph here represents our inorganic removal. And there's quite a disparity between the two. Our bottom uh, circles here representing the GAC. And our squares and diamonds up here representing the pyrolyzed and gasified carbon. Um, and although uh, 
you know, this disparity exists. It's important to note that, you know, within the 500 bed volume value, there was a certain, um, I suppose, shoulder effect. And so it does suggest that certain removal does occur here, but it's certainly not um, able to be sustained as it is here. And uh, for, for our last solution that we uh, experimented, this was the hypo sodium hypochlorite solution. And instead of um, imposing one on top of the other, I decided to put these graphs next to each other to just give you that image that these are, in fact, almost identical in uh, removal efficiency. And chlorine or dechlorination has been the most promising uh, form of water filtration that we've seen with our biochar. And as you can see, we've we processed over 25 liters of water comparably with zero trace amount of chlorine. And that test is still going on and we're going to continue to monitor that. And it's pretty quite remarkable that um, our, you know, relatively inexpensive um, material could be as effective as the industry standard right now. And so some of our preliminary conclusions, <clears throat> although comparable, uh, biochar is in fact not equivalent to uh, the industry standard GAC. Um, we believe that to be um, a result of deficient uh, surface areas, porosities. Um, we are sending our samples to be analyzed uh, via BET um, down to our sister lab in Arizona State University. So we'll have some more definite values for you there following. Um, furthermore, uh, we, d we were able to realize that, the, yes, in fact, the production processes do uh, affect the structural matrices of these products. Um, as I mentioned before, the lower temperatures of our pyrolyzed biochar generated a uh, much dirtier material uh, as compared to the gasified uh, biochar, which was able to volatilize a lot of the material into a, uh, a cleaner overall product. And um, despite its rather, you know, it wasn't as uh, equal in removal efficiency, it is as, a, you know, quite effective in removing organic matter. And it is surprisingly comparable to GAC for dechlorinating water. And so what that led us to uh, believe and pursue, um, some, we believe that additional uh, post paralysis production cleaning methods would help uh, generate a product uh, via paralysis that could be um, cleaner and hopefully uh, more uh, sorptive in application. Um, we would like to expand on our list of contaminants other than just the four that we have. Um, via a, in, in a kinetic type of experiment. And uh, based on the results that we have thus far, um, we, we feel confident enough to approach the NSF, uh, National Sanitation Foundation, uh, for potential certification for in uh, resident uh, or household use. And um, if we do get the go ahead with that, and I have been in contact with the NSF, um, and we do have the paperwork, and if that does go through, um, we will hopefully develop our own proprietary uh, filter medium, uh, biochar based, and we could even go one step further and uh, develop our, um, put, actually put our material in a finished product, filter product, much like this that we've been uh, beginning to render. And uh, we believe that you could potentially see this type of filter with this type of medium on the shelf at Home Depot next to the, your activated carbon. So uh, we're still in the developing stages, and uh, there's a lot more to come. But from what we have thus far, we're pretty confident. We're very excited. And um, that's all I have for you. And some questions or comments or contacts. Thank you. Uh, we have time for maybe one question. Yes, sir. So, uh, one of the things that people are concerned about when they think of biochar in the big ag setting is the particles like the grain and slime get smaller, maybe in like slime removing water. And I'm curious in your experiment, though, if the man with much higher water velocity said you might see some of that effect. So, I'm wondering if you can take a look at the water, do you see any kind of um, products from the biochar itself? It's a very good question. Um, actually, to avoid such an incident, 
we mechanically ground our biochar uh, to a size of 80 by 100 sieve. So it's already very finely ground. And uh, we also um, put a, a capture system to, to basically inhibit such a thing from happening. So the short answer is no, we didn't see any um, leftover biochar in our effluent. But uh, we could also develop uh, more of a, a stronger capture system in those filtering images here to uh, avoid such a thing.